this, that you are a God who speaks. And our ears are open tonight, Lord God. We want to hear you speak. We want to be transformed by the word of God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that this word that we hear, that it will put a seal on 2018. Lord God, that it will thrust us into 2019 and help us to stretch past whatever we've seen, beyond what we've heard, beyond what we've been exposed to, and go to the next level. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. You can take your seats. Amen. I just want to take a moment just to thank uh, those that are serving with us tonight. Uh, Brother Thai B.D. Sims on the organ, <laughs> serving with us tonight from that great church in Dearborn, Michigan, the only Kojic church in Dearborn, Michigan, the Kingdom International. Thank God for Brother Ernest Cannon as well, who's uh, serving with us tonight, and Elder James Johnson. Let's just give a hand for these great men of God that are serving with us here tonight at Pentecostal Temple. And of course, we thank God for those uh, singers and musicians here at the church, everybody who has served all throughout this year. We praise God for you. And I want to thank uh, also those of you that are visiting with us tonight and some of you, your family, and you just here to see about your family before the year is over. And it's so good to have all of you here this evening. You could have done anything, but we're so glad you've come to worship with us tonight. Let's go beyond. Let's go beyond. The year was 1954, May the 6th, and there was a runner by the name of Roger Bannister who sought to do something that had never been done before. He sought to do something that was once considered impossible because of observers and, and other people who they knew the math, they knew the science, and they said that what he was trying to do was impossible. And here's what it was. It was running a four-minute mile. And so there he goes, lacing up his shoes, getting ready. The clock is ticking, and he does the impossible. He runs a mile in four minutes. Now, isn't that something that all of those years of Olympics and running and activities of the sort that nobody had ever ran a four-minute mile. But what took place after he wore, ran this four-minute mile, after he broke that barrier, over 1,400 athletes have broken the barrier as well. In 64 years, since that record has been lowered since uh, by 17 seconds, and so now the record is three minutes and 43 seconds. For what was once considered impossible, what was considered that could not be done. And when I look at this story in the natural, I think about what God does in the spiritual. How God is in the business of pioneering. He's in the business of breaking through and doing something fresh, and doing something new that's never been done before. I mean, just look at the life of Jesus. Here is a man born of a virgin, never been done before. Here is a man that lives a life free from sin, never been done before. Here's a man that does so many great things and works miracles and, and, and heals the blind and, and raises the dead. And he does all of these things that had never been done. And in fact, when Jesus did something, some folks said, man, we ain't never heard nobody teach like this before. We've never seen anybody move like this before. We, we've never seen a man do these kinds of things. Jesus was a pioneer. He broke new ground. He did things that was um, previously considered impossible. And Jesus, he's with his disciples, and he tells them something very interesting. He tells them, the works that I do, you're going to do too, and greater works than these are you going to do. So not only has he broken new ground, but he's saying you're going to do better and greater than I've ever done. Now that's something for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Son of God, to look at us sinful flesh and say, you're going to do greater than I have done. It doesn't seem to make sense. It doesn't seem... Uh, to be something that, uh, that, that, that we would even consider logical because if you look at the chapters right before this happens, Jesus is washing his disciples' dirty feet. He's washing their feet, and he's saying that you need to go and wash feet also. It was the slave's job. And here is Jesus reversing the roles. When his feet should have been washed, here he is serving those under him. 
You know, you, you know greater than being a servant. Servant isn't beneath anybody. But while Jesus is serving and then he goes on to have the Passover meal, here's what happens. He's serving a Passover meal and he's washing the feet of even the very person that's going to betray him. Judas is in the number. And here is Jesus washing Judas' feet. Uh, For for everybody that's so bent on cutting everybody off, there's some folk that you need to serve to show them that you really say for real. Here Here he is serving Judas, his betrayer. Here he is serving communion to the disciples, all of which will leave away from him. He even finishes the chapter by telling Peter, you know, Peter, you you say you're going to be with me. You're never going to leave me. In fact, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. You're going to deny me, Peter. Judas, you're going to betray me. All of you are going to run away from me. And after all of this that Jesus told them, he then tells them, you're going to do greater works than I do. Now, what kind of God is that who knows your past knows your mistakes, even knows the mistakes you're going to make in the future, and yet looks at you and says, God's got greater in store for you. That's something that God is not caught up in the things we've done. He's not caught up in the mistakes that he knows that we're going to make. He doesn't count us out and discount us because of those things that have happened and those things that are going to happen. He looks at you, and he doesn't call it like it is. He calls it like it's going to be and says that greater works are available for you. But, but there's something that we've got to take note of if we want to experience the life of beyond. There's something that we got to take note of if we're going to do it. The first thing we got to do is we got to exercise belief. You've got to exercise your belief. If your belief has been flabby in 2018, it's time to get your belief in shape for 2019. Here's what he tells them all throughout this chapter. He's saying, believe in me. Believe in me. Don't you believe in me? And he tells them, if you believe in me, the works that I do, you will do also. So the very first step to going beyond is not doing anything physical. It's not exerting any energy. It's turning on the light on the inside and believing in God. Believing in God. Tell somebody, believe in God. Believe in God. That's where it starts. It is a faith walk. It is a faith move. And we should not expect to do anything great for God if we don't have the faith for it. We've got to believe. The life of the believer is a life of faith. It is a life of belief. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must what? believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. It is a faith walk, not a feelings walk. It is not a sight walk. It's a faith walk. You have to believe in your heart that God can do the radical in you and through you. Are there any believers in the house tonight? Amen. It's time to believe. Sometimes we cut off our future simply because we don't believe. Sometimes we cut off what can't be done because we don't believe and our unbelief becomes a false prophet. It tells us that we can't do it. And instead of believing God, we believe the lie. And then we make the lie into our reality. And then we think that it's uh, something that that God had appointed for our lives. And if if God wanted it to happen, it just would have happened. And God is saying, no, I wanted it to happen, but you did not believe. But I declare over your life that you're not going to miss an opportunity in 2019 because of unbelief. That you're going to believe your way into some great things for the year. So the first thing you've got to do is exercise your belief. You can't be stuck on what doesn't look rational. You can't be stuck on on, on what, what seems to make sense and what doesn't make sense. Well, how could God possibly do that? Well, how could God possibly make that happen with my credit and with my background and with my pedigree and with my lack of degree and with my lack of money? How could God possibly do it? Listen, God works best with impossible. He works best when there's nothing because he walked out on nothing and said, let there be. So if you got nothing to work with, God's got everything to work with. When it looks like there's nothing there, exercise your belief. So he tells them, believe in me. And and the works that I do, you will do also. So here's the next thing uh, that we need here is we need exposure to greater. Exposure to greater to greater. You can jot that down if you want to. Exposure to greater. Jesus is saying, um, if if you don't just want to believe in me, believe on the works that you've seen me do. 
He says, the works that I do, the things that you've seen, you're going to do as well. Which lets me know that in order for them to understand what he's saying, there had to have been some works that they saw him do. I mean, look at the works that they've seen him do. And this is just in the Gospel of John. They see him turn water into wine. They've seen the greatest prophet, Jesus said, John the Baptist, confirm that Jesus was even greater. They saw Jesus prophesy to a woman at the well, told her about all her ex-husbands and the one she's playing house with. That's not her husband. Until she turned her life around and told an entire city, come see a man who told me everything that I knew and become a great evangelist for God. They saw Jesus heal a lame man at the pool of Bethesda who had been there for so many years and says, I would get healed. But if somebody would put me in the pool, but people keep passing me up and Jesus healed him. They saw Jesus feed 5,000 with just the little boy's lunch of bread and fish. They saw Jesus in John chapter 6 walk on the water. I mean, who, who walks on the water? I was on a cruise ship the other day, and I didn't think twice about getting on the water. Amen. But Jesus was walking on the water. They saw Jesus teach powerfully in ways that had never been done. They saw Jesus heal a blind man in John chapter 9. They saw Jesus escape from death in a way that nobody could have done. They saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. They had been exposed to greatness. And I believe what God wants to do for us is he wants to expose us to something beyond us. He wants to show you a house you never imagined you could ever live in. He wants to show you what can be accomplished through things that you never thought were possible. He wants to expose you to the unprecedented. He wants to show you that somebody can run the four minute mile so that you can break the record. God wants to expose you to greatness so that you can level up beyond where you are. See, there were some things that you never thought could be done until you saw somebody do it. You, you never thought, man, how can, I, how can I raise my kid? I don't know how folks do it, do work a job and raise a kid until you meet somebody who got seven kids and, and they're they looking all right. Hey, Amen. Thank you, mom. You know, you, you, you look at people's situation. You don't know how it can happen. How can you get out of debt with the amount of money that you make until you saw somebody do it? And you say, you know what? I think I, I can do this thing. You know, I'm, I, I, got a, I got a video game on my phone. I ain't played video games in years, but I got one on my phone right now. And it's, it's a nice little break from the usual. It's a nice little break from reading and doing all that kind of stuff. But I'm stuck on a level. I was stuck on a level. And I could not beat this level. And I was trying to figure out how can I beat this level. And, and so I said, well, let me ask Google. And I asked Google, how can I beat this level on Mario Run? That's the game I'm playing. Hey, Amen. That's the game I'm playing. And it took me to a YouTube video that showed me somebody beating the level. And when I saw how they beat the level, I said, I can beat this level too. And went back to my phone and copied what I saw them do, and I was able to beat the level. God is saying, you've been up against this wall. You've been up against this ceiling, but he's about to show you somebody that beat the level so that you can grab hold and go to the next level. Tell somebody to level up. He's, he's showing you and exposing you to some stuff because he wants to stretch your capacity. Uh, he, he wants to enlarge your territory. There's some things that he wants to put inside of you, but he's saying, uh, I've got to put some new wine in these skins. I've got to stretch you out because the stuff that I want to put inside of you and do through you is bigger than the box you've ever been in. It's bigger than the box that you placed in your mind. It's, it's bigger than the parameters and, and the things that you boxed yourself into. And you said, no, it's got to be done this way. It's got to look this way. But God is shattering your box. He's exposing you to greatness. And, and here's what happens after that. After they exercise belief and after they are exposed to greatness, then Jesus shows them an equal playing field. He's saying you, you've been exposed to it. And now that you've been exposed to it, the works that I do, you're going to do also. He's saying you, you've seen me heal blind eyes, but now you're going to heal some blind eyes. You've seen me teach with authority, but now you're going to teach with authority. You've seen me go here and there, but you're going to go to the nations. Jesus only went so far. He didn't go too far out of his locale, but he's saying you're going to go all around the world. 
you, yeah, I'm, I'm walking, but you're going to fly airplanes and deliver uh, the message. Yeah, I'm on a boat, but you're going to be on a cruise ship. I don't hear nobody in here. I'm just, I'm just reveling in what the Lord has done for me. Amen. You know, he, he's saying that you, you, have, you have seen these things, and you're going to do these things too. And after you get exposed, your, your belief, your belief goes higher. And you see that, man, I really can do this. And so what Jesus is trying to show us here is that he wants us to come up where he is. He wants you to at least hit the benchmark. And then he takes it a step further. He says, and greater works than these shall you do. So not only are, are you, you at my level of performance now, but now it's time to exceed the benchmark. And any leader worth their salt wants the people that they're leading to exceed where they've been and to exceed where they're going. Everybody shouldn't have to start from scratch every single time. No, we should lift them up and put them on the next level and take them to the next plane. I was telling somebody today, they were asking me what I do, and I tell them, you know, I'm a, I'm a pastor. And I told him about my grandfather, and I talk about my grandfather often and talk about how he came to this church at the same age that I was, on the same Sunday, in the same month. And, and he came to, a, to this little white church that is just a shack of a building, but came preaching and came teaching and came doing the work of the Lord. And many of y'all were children, and some of y'all were just right there with him as he was doing the work of ministry. But I told them now, 55 years later, I walk in to, to three buildings all paid for. I, I, I walk into a, a thriving and, and bustling congregation. I said, I, I, I didn't do this. I just, just don't need to mess up. That's all I need to do is not mess up. You know, he, 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 done, he done got it started. I just need to stand on his shoulders and keep moving forward. And so what Jesus is saying is that I've done so much for you. I've laid foundation. I, I've already built up on this thing. You don't have to go back and start all over, but start where I stopped. And so there he is, lifting them up and pushing them higher and saying, you're going to do greater works than I've done. Now, I've heard people try to rationalize this and say, well, when Jesus said greater, he didn't really mean greater. What he was saying was quantity, which means they're, they're going to do more uh, in number than he did because Jesus was just one person. And there's going to be billions of Christians moving on. Listen, I don't care about all of that. If he said greater, I want greater. If he said you're going to move mountains, I want to move mountains. If he said you can say that this tree be plucked up and thrown into the sea, I want to speak to the tree to be plucked up and thrown into the sea. And not only that, I want to do greater, unprecedented, never been seen, never been heard, never been done. I am ready for greater. Here, here, here was Jesus. He's. He's walking through a, a, a crowd of people, and, and while he's walking through a crowd of people, the Bible says that a woman with the issue of blood comes up to him and touches him, and he stops, and he looked and said, somebody touched me. Now, Jesus been touched all his life. He's walking in a crowd of people, and his disciple says, what are you talking about? There's a crowd of people here. Everybody touching you. He says, no, this touch was different. I felt power leave my body. Why would Jesus stop in his tracks at being touched like that? Because he had never been touched like that before. And what I'm trying to tell you is that there is a release of power that God wants to unleash that's going to come from those who've touched him in a way they've never touched him before. There's going to be an outpour that there's never been because God is saying they're touching me and seeking me in a way they've never done before. Oh, I never heard that song before. Oh, I've never heard that sermon before. No, I've never seen great faith like this in all of Jerusalem. They did something that had never been done. Here is the apostle Paul. And the Bible is saying that they're doing unusual miracles through the hands of Paul by taking strips of cloth off his body and sending it to folk for them to be healed. There's no scripture that says, cut this and then cut on the bias and cut a little bit of fabric off and then pour oil on it and then send it all, all across the nation so people could be healed. There's no scripture for that. But somebody said, what if? What if? In fact, that needs to be your question for 2019. What if? 
man, man, what if this is possible? What, what if I could do that? What, 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 what if? And, and not saying why, not, not saying why can't it, but saying what if? And opening up your mind to the possibilities. God wants to put curiosity back in your heart. To say, God, what could you do? What could be possible? He's saying, we, we've, we've never seen it before. We've never heard it before. We've never done it before. There is Jesus. He, he wants to heal somebody. And a, and, a, and a centurion comes up to him and says, my servant is at home and he's sick. And Jesus said, all right, I'm going to come with you. I'm going to come and, and heal him. And he says, no, don't do that. He says, I'm a man under authority. I know how this thing works. I just tell somebody to do something and they go and do it. But Lord, if you just send the word, he'll be healed. And Jesus, the Bible says, he was amazed. He was blown away. Why? Because ain't nobody ever came to me and said, God, just put your word in the envelope and mail it spiritually and the person will be healed. He said, ain't nobody ever did that before. Man, this is some kind of faith. Go and be healed. And the Bible says that at that very hour, his servant was healed. Why? Because he didn't have a scripture for how God could heal. He just says, God, if you could do it, I know it's possible. You don't have a scripture for putting anointing oil on your unsaved husband's pillow and him laying on it and waking up and saying, honey, I feel like going to church today. There ain't no scripture for that. But somebody said, I'm going to test the limit. I'm going to go beyond what I've ever seen. Stretch forth the curtains of your inhabitation. Strengthen the stakes. Lengthen the cords. You're about to break forth. God wants to do more in you and greater in you. But then we see that God tells them, how he's able to do it. We see that God gives them the secret for going to beyond. Do you want the secret? I don't know if you really want the secret. I don't know if you really want the secret. But, but here is the secret to going beyond. He says, greater works than these shall you do because I go to my father. Greater works than these shall you do because I go to my father. Now, you would think that in order to do greater, they would need the great one with them right there. But Jesus says, no, um, I got to go away. And if I go away, you'll be able to do greater. Well, why is that? You got to go to verse uh, chapter 16, verse 7 to see what Jesus is trying to say. He says in John 16, verse 7, nevertheless. I tell you the truth. It's expedient. It's best for you that I go away. Why? Because if I don't go away, the comforter will not come unto you. Jesus is telling them that in order for you to go beyond, I've got to go away and I've got to send you an unlimited power to encourage you, to strengthen you so that you can go beyond. And I thank God that he has sent the Holy Ghost. He's saying that you don't have to do this in your own power. In fact, you cannot do this in your own power. He told them before he left, he says that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you're going to be my witnesses in all of Jerusalem, in all of Judea, into the uttermost parts of the world. He says your sons are going to have the spirit. Your daughters are going to have the spirit. Your old men are going to have the spirit. Your young men are going to have the spirit. On your men servants, on your maid servants, the rich, the poor, anybody who opens themselves up, they're going to have the power of the spirit and they'll be able to go beyond. So I'm here to tell you that, that what you need to ask God for, uh, you may need a new car, but there's something more important than a new car. You may need a new house, but there, there's something more important than a new house. I, I, I know you need some money, but there's something more important than money. Ask God, Lord, give me an unlimited outpour of the Holy Ghost. God, feel me again. Because I know that if you feel me, I'll have the wisdom that I need. And if I've got wisdom, I can get the money. Lord, I know that if you feel me, I'll have what I need. Because if you feel me, my attitude will change. If you feel me, I can win some souls. If you feel me, I can do what I could never do before. I can go beyond the status quo. Beyond the benchmark. Because I have an unlimited reservoir of power on the inside of me. In fact, the Bible says, if you believe on me, as the scripture I said, out of your belly. 
shall flow, not just a river, but rivers. Rivers, 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 not one, not two, unlimited rivers, unlimited flow, unlimited power. If you just grab hold of the power of the spirit, not by might, nor by power, but by spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Would you just lift your hand and say, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Lord, fill me with your spirit again. I can't do it in my own power. I can't do it in my own ingenuity. I can't do it with my own logic. God, I need the Holy Ghost. I need your power. I'm trying to work and I'm trying to study, but it seems like I just can't get it. Lord, I need your spirit to fall down on me. Come on, open your mouth and just ask the Lord for his spirit again. Lord, fill me again. Fill me again, Lord Jesus. Fill me till I overflow. Fill me with the Holy Ghost, Lord God. Fill us again. Fill us again, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Fall down. Fall down. Fall down. down. On me. Fall down. Hallelujah. Fall down, fall down, down on me, fall down, fall down, fall down, down on me, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He wants to fill you tonight. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If there's anybody here tonight and you say, I I need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm ready to go beyond. Maybe you felt like you were at an impasse. Maybe you felt like, uh, I'm ready to accomplish more. I'm ready to do more. I'm ready to be more. If that's you tonight, I want you to come up here. We want to pray for you. We want to lay hands on you. Hallelujah. God wants to do more through you and in you than you've ever known before. Amen. Well, the evangelists could come down. Amen. Ministers, you can go down. Amen. Hallelujah. On me, fall down, fall down, fall down, down. on me, even me, Lord, even me, even me, Lord, even me. Let some drops now fall on me. Even me, Lord. Even me. Even me, Lord. Even me. Let some drops now fall on me. Hallelujah. Sing your song to the Lord. Come on, let's worship him. While we're praying for them up here, let's open our mouths and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Fill us again, Lord God. Fill us again, Lord Jesus. Fill us again, Lord God. Fill us with your spirit. Empower us, Lord God. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the spirit of truth. Guide our footsteps, Lord God. Guide us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Send your spirit. Send your rain, Lord God. Rain on us, Lord. 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 Refresh us before the year is over. Refill us before the year is over. Heal us in our bodies. Heal us in our minds. Fill us, Lord. 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 Oh, yo, 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 yo. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Oh, ha, ha. Fill us, Lord. 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 We need you, 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 Lord. Fill us up, Lord. Come on, press in his presence tonight. Fill us up, Lord. Fill us up, Lord. Hey. Fill us up, Lord. Fill us up, Lord. Hey. Fill us up, Lord. Right now, Lord. Hey. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. Right now, right now, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on and tell them yes. Yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord. Hey, yes, Lord. Hey, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hey, we tell him yes. He made a way. He made a way. He made a way. He made a way. Stay right there. He made a way. He brought me out. He's opened many doors. Hey, glory to God. Yeah. Hey. We say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hey. I got to tell him yes. We love you, Lord. Come on, press in his presence. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Oh, we love you, Lord. Well, clap your hands and give God praise. Give God some praise. Ay, 
Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. The time of refreshing has come. The time of refreshing has come. Your burnout is gone in the name of Jesus. Your worry is gone in the name of Jesus. Your stress is gone in the name of Jesus. The time of refreshing, the time of refreshing has come. The Holy Ghost is here. Hallelujah. 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 The spirit of joy is here. The spirit of joy is here. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. We rebuke depression in the name of Jesus. We rebuke low self-esteem in the name of Jesus. Insecurity, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit comes upon you right now in the name of Jesus. And if you receive the word, if you believe the word, you ought to seal it with the praise. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. with the praise hallelujah hallelujah glory thank you Jesus for your healing power thank you for the next level thank you for the breakthrough in the name of Jesus hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh. another shirt. I didn't intend on screaming that much. I didn't intend on sweating my shirt out. But God is worthy of getting ugly for him. As ugly as the year has been, I ought not be too cute to give God some praise on the last day of 2018. One, two, three, press. He brought you through another year. You owe God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Bless the Lord in our giving tonight. I didn't play. I didn't play. Hi, my God. Glory to Jesus. The Bible says that there were four lepers. And these four lepers were in Israel's camp. And Israel was besieged and the enemies were coming against them. And the lepers said, why sit here and die? We might as well get up and go surrender to the enemy. Because we're just going to sit here and die anyway. Got to stretch because I'm about to shout again. And, uh, and the Bible says that as they were walking, that uh, God, it seems that he put a stereophonic sound system in nature with high quality condenser mics underneath their feet. And it says that when they were walking, that the enemy heard the sound of horses and chariots. I know we got carpet here, and I know many folk can't hear the shout of your feet, but I hear the Holy Ghost saying that your shout on this last day of 2018 is sending the sound of ambushments into 2019. And God is defeating enemies right now in your future that you ain't gonna have to fight because of the dance that you give him right now. I know it don't make sense. I, I know it seems a little cuckoo, but I'm crazy enough to believe that I'm gonna win this battle with my feet, hey! With my feet, with my feet, with my feet, with my feet, I'm fighting with, I'm fighting, I'm fighting. I'm fighting, not with my hands, but with my feet. Not with my hands, but with my feet. Not with my words, but with my feet. Not with my gun, but with my feet. Not with a sword, but with my feet. Not with my hands, but with my feet. Not with my gospel, but with my feet. Not with complaining, but with my feet. With my feet, with my feet. With my feet. All right. Everybody's standing. We're going to bless Five seconds. You got five more seconds. You got five more seconds. You might as well give it to him. Woo! Woo! What an awesome word. What an awesome word.
Come on, can we celebrate the word of God? Woo, and Pastor Kellen, let's go beyond. Woo, let's go beyond the veil. Let's go beyond our fears. Let's go beyond. Woo, my God, my God. Everybody standing. My, my, my. What a word, what a word. Thank God. I want to pray for this offering right now. As some of you may be giving uh, this last offering before the new year, I want to definitely bless uh, your finances for your sacrifice right now. Father God, we thank you. Oh, we thank you. Thank you, God, for allowing those to give in this offering. We pray, oh God, that they'll give liberally in this offering for all that you have done for them. They still have something to give. We thank you right now, oh God. Move, oh God, in their purses. Move in their wallets. Move right now in their pocketbooks. We thank you right God, right now, oh God, for what you're getting ready to do, oh God. They're giving unto the kingdom, oh God. And giving unto the kingdom, oh God, is giving back to you. We thank you right now, oh God. Yes, oh God, for the scripture declares, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you're going to return it back to them. Press down, shaken together, running over. You're going to give it up to their bosom. I thank you right now, oh God, that they're able to sow right Right now, bless it right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, come with your offering at this time. Woo! You can come dancing, you can come rejoicing, you can run up here if you want to. However, you want to do it, it's all right with us. Woo! Amen. Amen. We praise God for you coming out tonight. Were you blessed by the word? Amen. Amen. Thank God for our bishop giving tonight in a big way. $300 he's sowing tonight. Amen. Praise God. For our senior pastor, Bishop Isaac King Jr. This week, everything at the church is canceled. We'll be back on Sunday, the first Sunday of the year at our regularly scheduled time. We want you to have a safe and happy new year. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy your family. And we look forward to seeing you back here this Sunday. So let's stand to our feet. Amen. Thank God for our church mother emeritus, Mother Agnes Logan. Amen. Amen. Mother Logan, just wave at the people. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Mother Logan, her great daughter that's with her, supporting her and helping her. Evangelist our Linda Thompson. Amen. Every head bow, every eyes closed. Father God, we thank you so much for this day. We bless you for this time and this opportunity to come before your presence, Lord. And we ask you now, Lord God, that you would seal this word in our hearts. Father God, let it take good ground and bring forth good fruit. Father, bless each and every person here tonight under the sound of my voice. Bless them as they leave this place, never your presence. Keep their hearts and minds stayed on you till we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Amen. You are dismissed. Go in peace.